I'm Mike Pearl, no concertina music today. Uh, we're here to answer your Bible questions, and uh, I've not seen any of these questions beforehand. Uh, it's just because I, if I did, I'd spend a lot of time preparing for it, and I don't have that much time. I've got a bunch of grandkids I, that demand my time. So I just walk in here cold turkey, and he hits me with your questions, and I try to come up with an answer. So, Jared, what's the first question? Was the Sabbath given as a sign for Jews, or should it be observed today as a day of worship by Christians? All right. Clearly, there are several times in the Old Testament. Let me see. I think I made some notes in the back of my Bible one time on that issue. Uh, if I can locate them, yes, here they are. All right. Chapter, Exodus chapter 31, verse 12. And let me read that to you. Uh, Exodus... My old Bible's falling apart. I have to hold on to it. 31, 12. My fingers are too dry. That's what happens when you get old. Everything starts drying up. Here it is, uh, beginning in verse 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath, not just one Sabbath, but multiple Sabbaths. Ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbaths, plural, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. And he goes on and, and talks about what they shouldn't do on the Sabbath. You see, they had a Sabbath of days, they had a Sabbath of months, they had a Sabbath of years. Uh, then there were other Sabbaths during the course of the, the year, like uh, the fe feast days, seven days of feasting. Uh, and then they had Sabbaths of uh, Sabbaths, uh, like every 49 years. And then there was Sabbaths of, of Sabbaths of Sabbaths that was four 70-year periods, which came out to 490. And Israel... Israel history can be divided into four periods of 490 years. You can see that in Larkin's Dispensational Truth. So uh, the other day someone said to me that, d d are, you, are you a Sabbath keeper and, uh, or, or Sunday keeper? And I said, <laughs> I said, I'm a Monday keeper and a Tuesday keeper and a Wednesday keeper and a Thursday keeper and a Friday and a Saturday and a Sunday keeper. I observe the Lord Jesus Christ every day and worship Him without pause throughout the whole week. And all days are holy unto me. Now, they said, but do you, do you set aside the Sabbath as unique, as special? Jesus is my Sabbath. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. And uh, so, no, I don't hold Saturday or Sunday as a day above any other day of the week. All days are equal. Now, even though I was born with Jewish blood, uh, I'm now in Christ. And being in Christ, I am no longer under the bondage of that Mosaic law. And if I were, and I said to this person, do you keep Sabbath? Yes. I said, then I thought you went to church on the Sabbath. I said, well, we do. I said, well, don't you get in your car and travel uh, four or five miles? He said, yes. I said, well, according to the Bible, if you keep Sabbath, you're not to go out of your place. And uh, don't you guys get together and have dinner and play ball and, and games and stuff on Sunday afternoon? All, he said, yeah, I'll get all the kids together. I said, well, the Bible says you're only to think holy thoughts. You're not to think your own thoughts and not even to speak your own words. You can't talk about work. You can't talk about politics. You can't talk about uh, playing ball. You can't talk about family matters. All you can do is read the Word of God, pray, and meditate. The Jews determined you couldn't travel any more than about a half mile. And so if the synagogue were further than a half mile away, it was not legal to, to, to walk to it. And uh, they, they're not allowed to build a fire on the Sabbath. You can't light your stove. You can't uh, carry a pot in a pan. Uh, you can't cook your meals. You cook them the day before. See, I don't know of anybody on the face of the earth except a few Orthodox Jews in Israel that actually keep a biblical Sabbath. See, just to set aside one day so you'll be unique among Christians and then brag about your, <laughs> your allegiance to the Sabbath, but then totally ignore what God says you're supposed to do to keep it is uh, a bit silly. So if you want to keep Sabbath, do it God's way. Uh, but then if you do, you're falling from grace because you're coming back under the law of Moses. You're coming back under that which uh, the Bible said brought death. The letter of the law killeth, the spirit giveth life. 
So, uh, no, I'm not a Sabbath keeper, never have been, and uh, never will be. Uh, now, let's see what was some more, some more of those verses of Scripture. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18 is interesting in this regard. Uh, so, let me, let me say it uh, the way I like to say things. If you're a Sabbath keeper, you're sinning. It's a sin to keep the Sabbath. Uh, it's a sin because you're falling from grace. You're ignoring the provision of God in Christ. Uh, let me see if I can find Hebrews here. I can't talk and, and uh, quote my books of the Bible at the same time. Okay, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18. Uh, beginning in verse uh, 18. Uh, and, to whom, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. For we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So the Sabbath that he promised them was a Sabbath of Christ, a rest in Christ, which they couldn't enter into because of unbelief. Now in Romans 14, 15, it's interesting. Let me turn to that. Romans 14, verse 15. He said, but my brethren, be grieved with thy meat. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Let's check my verse again. Romans 14, 5, okay. Okay, here it is. He says, uh, one man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. He that doth not regard it... Uh, that day, he, 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 and uh, he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. But he that eateth not, eateth not to the Lord, and giveth God thanks. None of us lives to himself, no man dies unto himself. He said, No, you not, we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you think, receive the things done in the body, and so forth. The whole context of this is not to be uh, that some people are weak in the faith, he said, verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye. One man believeth he may eat all things, another believeth he may eat herbs, another, one man holds one day above another, and so forth. So he says there's some people who are weak, weak in faith. And because of that, they feel like they can't eat meat. Or they feel like that they should keep a Sabbath day, and they are not at liberty to love the Lord equally on all days. And so he said, uh, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He said, don't judge another man in regard to that. Don't come down on his case because uh, it's to the Lord he does it. And uh, so if he's making a mistake in that regard, if he's weak conscience, uh, let him be because he's going to stand in the judgment seat of Christ and receive the things done in his body. So if there were, not, if there were such thing as Sabbath keeping, this would have been a good place to say it in discussion of holding one day above another. In other words, if if it were mandatory upon Christians or expected of them to observe one day above another, Paul would have clearly said so. But what he did, he left it open and said, uh, whatever your view is, okay. Uh, but just know that sometimes views are come out of weak consciences. In other words, a failure to clearly understand all that God says. And then Colossians 2.16 is another verse that we might turn to. Uh, 2.16 he says, uh, let no man, uh, so let me spoil principalities of powers. Let me get the context here. Okay. Uh, let no man judge you, therefore, in meat or drink, in respect of a holy day or of a new moon or Sabbath days, which are shadows. All these holy days, new moons, are shadows of things which are to come, but the body of, his, of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and so forth, not holding the head. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudence of the world, while living in the world, are you subject to ordinances like touch not, taste not, food, diet, which things are to perish with the using? So it indicates that being in Christ, we're no longer under the touch not, taste not, handle not ordinances. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 10. Galatians 4. Verse 10. Okay, this is a good one. He says, uh, Ye observe days and months and times and years. Now that's the church in Galatia. So they observed the days, the holy days. Uh, they observed the months 
and they observed the times and the years. Times were Jewish 360 day periods of time. Uh, I am afraid of you, he says, lest I bestowed upon you labor in vain. So it troubled Paul that the church in Galatia was observing holy days, Jewish holy days. He said it's an indication that they, that maybe he failed in communicating the grace of God to them. Paul felt like if they fully understood the grace of God, they wouldn't be in, embroiled in this Jewish legalism. He said, brethren, I beseech ye, be as I am, for I am as ye are, and injure no man, and so forth. And he goes on in there. So he, he begs them to be like he is in regard to these uh, observance of these days. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, uh, well, I think we've gone far enough for our time's sake. But you can look in uh, Genesis 2, 1 and 3, Exodus 20, 11, uh, 31, 17, Exodus 31, 17, Hebrews 4, 3 through 10, uh, Romans 1, 8, Mark 1, 5, Ephesians 6, 21, Matthew 13, 32, John 15, 15. It looks like that's what it is. And John 16, 12 are some of the verses I've got listed on that subject. All right. If you would like to ask a Bible question, email us at biblequestions at nogreaterjoy.org or call at 931-805-4820.